Today, I'm pleased to read to you a taste of the inspiring writings of a fellow content creator. Her name is Simone Cicic. I stumbled upon her clear, stunning, beautiful pointings and poetry. And she has given me permission to share her work. All of her links will be in the description below, so check her out. Thank you, Simone. No beginning, no end. Life invited me to encounter and immerse myself in many of its shapes and appearances, letting me experience many of its mysteries between abyss and bliss, trauma, addiction, and intoxication. Incurable, disease and disability, a love of a mother, otherworldly joy, bliss, interconnectedness, imminence and transcendence, marvel and states of enlightenment. Experience, observation, interpretation became a foundation of apparent knowledge and understanding, of patterns and cycles and correlations with insights so profound that left me with a seemingly deep understanding of this is it. I could see how everything appeared to be interrelated, in utter complexity and utter simplicity. And the deeper the understanding, the greater the shadow of the unknown. The more I seemed to understand the mystery, the more it dawned that this one I take to be myself the one apparently understanding is rather a fiction made up from memory and conditioning through experience. This one is deeply intertwined and part of the mystery that arose from no beginning and will never find an end, any solution any dissolution, any revelation, it can never comprehend or illuminate itself. When understanding morphed again into the unknown, sublime, embracing, and familiar, questions became silent and answers lost all their meaning. Nothing can really be said, yet stories can be told and written, paintings created, songs sung, music composed. This space here is like a little boudoir an invitation to wander through the unknown, through what cannot be grasped, life's transient shatterings and blessings, a starry night sky, stars twinkling for brief moments through the void. It should, or not, The stream of life does not serve as a home for notions of what should be and what should not be. 
these exist as mental inventions. But their immediate validity is not manifested through the concept of should or shouldn't. She does not prefer birth over death, growth over decay, health over sickness. Loveliness is not an exclusive manifestation of heavenly happiness. It also includes consuming sadness and pain. There are no turning points, coordinates, or boundaries where one transitions into another. It is a continuous river in which everything is lost to transience. This loss can force an imaginary ground to stand on, rules and laws to rely on. The desire for control, understanding, certainty. The division of life into what should be and what should not be creates belief systems, mindsets, and practices on how this can be achieved or avoided. And even if it looks like this for a while or not, life will still break you and all. The islands of apparent understanding and knowledge will not spare you from plunging into oblivion and eventually extinction. Despair can create stories meant to bring solace Convictions that carry across the gaping abyss of the unknown, of impermanence, pretending to know, and reason. An apparent answer to all the why, me, and not. According to the widely shared beliefs about right and wrong, good and evil, a lot of things in this life should not be as they are. It should be different. It should be better. Shoulds and shouldn'ts lead to a war on what is. If there's a rise of war, this is it. Living the dream or living in a nightmare, the vitality pulses through the entire dream landscape and the dreamer who is being dreamed Awakening should be an escape from it, into liberation, or maybe not. Drowning. They appear as given direction and order. What you are, have to become. What this world you barely know, except what you read, learn, and were told about is. You are looking for a place to be, purpose and meaning, seeking what this is all about, what they told you, these voices in your head. Named father, mother, 
teacher, master, God, and the devil, demons and angels, spirits and deities, your soul. You feel that they were lying to you. You are drowning. Something you cannot name seems to be swallowing you, slowly, bit by bit. You cling to your beliefs, what they taught you, what you practiced. They get louder, distracting. I am, I am. Silence is screaming. Presence, awareness, the same voice, disguised, trying to keep you above. You aim higher. Gradually, you feel how you drown. You can barely breathe. Aliveness, the stream takes you. I am. I am this, not this. You drown in what you thought it to be, and it is not that. What you know chokes you. You seem to die, but you don't. No one is dying. What seems like drowning are the voices in your head. They still pretend, as they knew the truth would be the truth. I am. Nothing more than that. Just let it go. Stop. Be still. For this moment. One moment, all, one moment, now, the thought stream passes, surrender the fight, resistance, let it all go, let it all be, right, wrong, nothing is right. Nothing is wrong. Nothing to achieve. Nothing to survive. Nowhere to arrive. Everything is lost. To this moment. To abundant presence. A sanctuary. Loss is the gate. Nothing to hold on. Still carried. Uncertainty is the ground on which everything grows. Transience, the stream that moves it all. Death of shape is inevitable. The foundation to thrive. Encountering fear to pass it by. Crumbles the heavy rocks, bends gravity, sucks in its very image, transcends form, becoming annihilated, assimilated, life as it is, in awe. Uncharted. Gazing into, at, out of, this. It is, lost, already. I am, lost, in this. Seems like depth. Seems like a pattern. But it has no coordinates. 
no lines, no edges. Recognizing the unknown, nothing more. It cannot grasp, be grasped, become. Is it? Chasing phantoms. The gaze follows a shadow in diverse gray. It leads into a blurred memory, a presumed origin of existence. Long ago, the shadow was given a name, a name full of expectation for an imaginary future, for an idea to manifest in flesh and blood. This idea this name, this expectation, became a personality, identity. Identity is made of belief and biology. It is profound identification with and attachment to beliefs and biology. Being a man or a woman, belonging to a race, a gender, a nation, a group, a tribe, a culture, a religion, a history. None of this is choice or innate. It is inherited, conditioned and borrowed be it beliefs and convictions, be it biology. It is a story rooted in the ideas of ancestors and cultural heritage, stored as memory in cells and the subconscious mind. Identity is conditioned, a program with an assumed beginning in birth and an assumed end in death. But none of this is what is. What is has no name, no affiliation. It knows nothing of me, you or the other, of tomorrow or yesterday of superiority or inferiority, of right or wrong, of good or bad. It needs no improvement, no tomorrow, no next, no better. It needs no healing. It is the epitome of completion, of peace, of liberation. And while seeking what truly is, trying to overcome trauma, karma, and finding the true nature, the true self, purpose, what it is supposedly meant to be, what it does, already exists beyond time and space. It has no beginning or end. It knows neither birth nor death. It has no questions and no answers. No reason and no purpose. The moment found out that identity and any affiliation are made up. A concept, an idea, a formation information. The war ends and becomes liberated from the collective heritage and trauma, karma, that determined personality and subconscious. 
identity became revealed as a phantom. There is nothing left to protect anymore. Nothing left to defend. Nothing to fight for. Nothing to achieve. Nothing to chase or seek. What is, is beyond vulnerability. It cannot be touched nor harmed. It is pure, unlimited, and undefined awareness in which all experience, time, space, biology appear. The nature of all that occurs, of all that manifests, is transient and temporary. There is no defined and segregated me, you, or any other. All experience happens to a mortal body, interpreted and operated via an organic processor, the brain, which by its mode of conditioned perception creates a reality of subject and object, a reality of separation. The story of me and you is an invention based on cultural conditioning. All narratives about me and others are made up by the mind and projected into what is named the world. All stories begin and end there, are attached to the matrix, a product of the collective mind. The moment the chase on phantoms ends, internal peace and liberation emerge, independent from the temporary and ever-changing appearances of the world. Glowing After the rain washed away the dirt from today, a golden fire is burning. Last clouds are dissipating, carrying memory from the storms of yesterday. Memories of birth and death. Life amidst all, emerging in time, space, and beyond. Vast are you, transcending all boundaries to take presence in all there is. And in your very transience, you are the eternal force that washed away yesterday and makes tomorrow a memory of oblivion. No traces will be found tomorrow, for tomorrow is an illusion. I'm real in that golden light, reflecting the beauty of what seems to be unreal. Although it was named, every sense words did exist, but your very nature just is. My confusion is so clear. Knowledge is power, is a widespread mantra in today's culture. It can create confusion in a volatile world, whether knowledge is based on science, religion, spirituality, or any other belief system. In the midst of the jungle of the unknown, there seems to be hope, offering seeming security, control, and predictability. 
Knowledge forms the basis of rules, laws, structures created and patterns observed. The belief in knowledge is strong. Some call it facts. Others call it intuition. It can be based on education, observation, reason, or experience. Anything that conveys a strong sense of understanding from everyday observations and experiences to mystical insights and enlightenment. Eureka, I got it. This is it. It seems that knowledge can be gained through learning, studying, practicing, and experience, which suggests that it is something that can be actively pursued. All knowledge, however, is an interpretation of perception that is processed in the brain. It aligns with conditioned beliefs and cultural systems that can change over time. Knowledge is volatile and impermanent. Today's truth may be tomorrow's falsehood. It's part of the mind's survival mechanism that navigates the unknown and creates mental pathways that can crumble as soon as they are stepped in. When it becomes clear that ultimately there is nothing you can really know, it becomes clear that the mind and all its creations are rooted in confusion. The confusion lies in the assumption that something solid comprehensible and meaningful exists in the seamless stream of appearances and sensations similar to building permanent sandcastles on the moving sand of the unknown. <laughs>